Okay. Hi, everybody. Some of you I know, some of you I don't know. I'm very excited to be here. It's going to be a really awesome course, I hope. I'll do my best. Um, first of all, everybody is expected to bring in a computer of some kind to class, so no phone. I mean, bring your phone and your iPad, but have a computer. Um, also, this I'm trying to record this, so in theory, we're going to have recording for all the classes, so you can go back online, especially when there's coding exercises and stuff. People often want to go back and, and see it. I'll also record videos sometimes of myself at home showing how to do an exercise so you can follow along. Um, let's see. Let me make this bigger so you can see it better. Okay. Boom. All right. So um, this website can be found, and hopefully you've all found it, at bit.ly bit.li slash cosi 166b. And it is your friend. Uh, everything in this course that you need to know about, that you need to know about from me, will be on this site. So uh, if you have a question, if you're wondering about something, go look here, okay? So what we're going to do today is a bunch of housekeeping things. I'm going to introduce you a little bit to myself, to the course, how it's going to work. We're going to have some discussions about the homeworks or the pre-work so far. We're going to, you're going to have to have, there's going to be three things of work you're going to have to do, fill out two forms and do one uh, 20 minutes leveling exercise, as I call it. 30 minutes. I, it's supposed to be 20. I changed that. There we go. 20. Boom. Um, I did it 30 minutes yesterday. It was too much. <laughs> okay. So, um, so this course is, is, is called IT, you know, Software Engineering for IT Entrepreneurs. I'm going to try to get the name changed because it's really uh, software engineering large project or something like that. So essentially we're going to go during the semester at a crazy pace through the whole stack of technology that it takes to build a web application. When I say web applications or a database backed web application, think Twitter, Facebook, Amazon, you know, anything that you run on the web that's an application would count. Okay? Um, so let me tell you really briefly about me to give you a little context. Um, I've been teaching for about three years now, um, four years depending on how you count. I've taught at Brandeis mostly also at Olin, and obviously I teach software, uh, about computer science, applied computer science. So I'm the, I'm the, I'm the practitioner in the department. Uh, I, I, I come from the uh, computer industry in the Boston area. I've worked in that industry for my whole career. I started companies, I worked as a consultant, I've done open source development, um, and uh, basically that's my life, that's my passion, and funny little fact is that I actually started that at Brandeis, so I'm actually a Brandeis grad, uh, and I came full circle, and here I am back again. Um, uh, the book for this course is this one, and hopefully you have it. I did not make it formally a required book. Uh, because I know some people like to buy the book, some people uh, like to get it out of the library or get an ebook or whatever. But suffice it to say, we're going to use this book a lot. And so if you like paper, I recommend, I, I, I require that you buy it and have it. If you like ebooks, that's fine too. We'll be going to use it a lot. You're going to be reading a lot of it. And, and one of the challenges I've got, because I've done this many different ways over the years, excuse me, this is bothering me for the time I'm late, is that. Um, how to get students to actually read the reading, and how to get them to actually take the time to understand deeply what they're reading. It turns out that this you will not succeed in this course, I promise you, if you do not do the readings and, under, and take the time to understand them. And so my challenge always is how to persuade you to do this uh, with a means other than the, the grade punishment, because that doesn't work either. So all I'm, I'm going to say this many times, but there'll be a lot of places where, where there'll be homework assignments that say read chapter one, read chapter two, do all the work, type it all in, and you'll be tempted to do it while you're in the gym on the on the uh, on the on the bicycle or when you're on the bus. Don't do it with your computer next to you and actually do the work, because this stuff is really. I mean, I can't teach it to you. All I can do is get you to learn it, because it's all kind of come from your effort and the time you put into it. 
the end point of this course is very, very cool. Uh, we're going to have a product showcase, and we're going to have, if we have 30 students, we're going to have uh, about seven different products that you guys are going to build. They're all going to be different. It's very creative. Uh, you're going to work in teams. And so basically, I'm going to try to uh, introduce you to all the bits and pieces you need to do this software. I will not write any code for you. You will write all the code. There will be no templates. There are no half-filled in source files. It's all blank piece of paper. But I'm going to introduce to you all the bits and pieces you need. So by the end, we will actually have seven or so really cool products. Happened every time before. It's probably going to happen again. OK? Um, I'm going fast because there's a lot of stuff I want to cover. But um, please do stop me. Uh, ask questions. Um, I want to uh, give you this. This is, is this legible by should I make the font bigger? Say what? Bigger, please. Thank you. Boom. How's that? Um, this is, I've written this, I've used it before. If you've taken class with me, you've seen it before. I should probably update it. But this is helpful in the sense that it's, I think it's useful for you to know what makes me tick. And it's useful for you to know the things I care about and the things that I care about that you care about. So I'll go through it really quickly. As you can tell from all the prep, this is, I'm going to venture to say, this is the most elaborate course website you've seen before other than my other course website. Because I tend to get a little bit compulsive about this. But really, it's my way of keeping straight what the hell I want to cover, because I have a very specific agenda, and I've got a lot of load to cover, and so I've got to make sure I stay on my pace. So I care a lot about it. And I'm always looking for improvements. You'll also find that many times during the semester, I'm going to do a post-it note exercise where I give everybody a post-it note and tell you to write some feedback on how I can improve the course. And you'll see that I will adapt the course accordingly. Um, I also care a lot about follow-up. If I tell you I'm going to do something, or if the TAs tell you they're going to do something, then it'll be done. And if it's not done, I'm going to feel really bad because I believe that you should be able to count on what I say. And in reverse, I want the same thing from you. If you tell me you're going to do something, if I ask you to do something, uh, if you've com made a commitment to me or to your teammates, then it's really important to me that you keep that. Um, of course, sometimes you can't, and then it's important to just say, hey, something went wrong. Here's why I can't. But just not, oops, the dog ate my homework, that kind of thing. Um, I can't, along the same lines, I care, care a lot of, about maturity and professionalism. And I say professionalism because we're not technically professionals, but to operate like professionals. And that means, you know, we're all grown-ups. I'm more grown-up than you, but we're all grown-ups. We come from different perspectives, different worlds, right? But, um, but I want us all to sort of meet at the same level with the same expectations. Um, I, I want to do my best to give you everything I can give you to make you really successful in this course. And with all that, I want you to do your best to be successful. Uh, I'm not going to babysit you. I'm not going to chase after you. Um, I'm going to expect you to rise to the occasion um, as long as I try to make the road as clear as I can for you. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of coding here, and everybody knows about Google and GitHub, and that it's easy to find answers to problems. And everybody knows that handing in something you didn't write yourself is a really, really big no-no. That's cheating. But, and I feel that way too. But that being said, I'm not going to chase after you or make sure you don't. I'm just going to say, those are the rules. That's the game we're playing. And then we know the game we're playing. Uh, I'm, you know, I just don't get into like a lot of like checking and so on. I want to count on you guys to be professional. Um, I'm very, very available to you, more than any student ever realizes. Um, I, will do, I will do a lot to help you be successful. Um, I answer emails. Not all professors do that. Uh, I will make myself available in person. I will make introductions for you if there's a, a job you're interested in or an internship or whatever. I will make references for you when that time comes. Um, I will help you find things to read, other things to study if you want to learn more. I'm really available because I think it's really fun. I enjoy it. And this is what I, this is my passion. I mean, software is what I do even when I'm not working. I code for fun. Uh, so I'm really available, and I really encourage you to believe that and take advantage of that. Take advantage of it. And realize that there's a lot of ways I can help you, and I sort of named them before. But I've been working in this business for a long time. I know a lot of people. I know a lot of companies. And I know that those people in those companies are always really interested in working with students and helping students be successful. You'd be surprised. And so I can make those connections for you. 
So take advantage of that. Okay? That's the FAQ. So let's talk a little bit about the pre-work and how it went. And now I'm going to have to try to get you to talk because nobody ever talked in the first class. So what do you guys think? Who, who learned Ruby for the first time now? And what did you think of it? Everything, it's all magical. Uh-huh. Like, you don't know how it, how it does things, but it does things. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Uh, yeah, it's cool because it's like, it's easy to pick up, but it's bad because you have no idea why it does the thing. Can you give an example of something that you thought about? Databases. Databases. Pardon? I mean, I didn't even learn about databases yet, yeah. but from what I know, uh, when, when you implement something like that, you have no idea why it does it, you just do fields. Okay, cool, it works. So you're talking about Rails. So Rails, Rails and Ruby oh. are separate. That's no, okay, it's cool, it's cool, totally cool. Uh, but you're right, Rails especially is, 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 is often people complain about that there's too much magic. Uh, and, and we'll learn a lot about Rails, and basically, but Rails is a really big Ruby library. That's really all it is. And it's designed to make it easy to build database backed web applications. And so the reason there's magic is because the people that designed Rails designed a lot of these apps that have a lot of patterns that are the same and they automate. And suddenly something that would have taken you, you know, 2,000 lines of code five years ago, you can do it three lines because, and that becomes like magic. Any other thoughts about Ruby? Any, what do you, who, who, who learned this for the first time and, uh, and ha have any thoughts on this side? Yes. Um. I don't know, just general things that I like about it, I guess. I kind of like how you can sort of, the way loops are, uh -huh. and how you can like print everything in an array in just like one line, yeah. with, like 30 characters. Yeah. I thought yeah. that was pretty cool. And yeah. I also kind of like how it, when you are when you like run the thing, it actually, like if you have a bunch of print statements, it'll print the stuff, and then like when there's an error, yeah. it'll be like there's an error here, but it'll still do stuff before yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's because it's not a, a compiled language, so it, it runs what it sees until it finds something it doesn't understand. Any other thoughts about Ruby, people that are new to Ruby? I think I saw it. Put your hand up. Yeah, so what did you think of Ruby? I thought it was not very verbose as the Java, and that's compact language like that. You like that? Yeah, yeah, people say that. I mean, when, after you get addicted to Ruby, you're going to go crazy with Java with all the stuff you've got to write. Yes. I thought it was kind of like intuitive to use. You yeah. Know? It just kind of made sense. Yeah. Like Who found it difficult? Who found it a confusing language? Didn't like it as much as Java. Yeah. Well, not Java, but it just, it's annoying like learning a new language, especially because you already learned another one. So there's some things that you're like, oh, I already know this, but then you go back and realize that you don't. Yeah. So it's a lot of flip flop. But yeah. I don't know, it's, it's not harder, but it's like different mm -hmm. ideas. like. I know like Ruby fields don't have like question marks. Like yeah. that's a bit weird, but when yeah. you think about it, it's like an interesting idea that a Boolean question has a question mark yeah. in the right. variable name. Right. That question mark in a variable name is just a convention, by the way. There's nothing that enforces if the method has a question mark. It's just a convention. Right, but at some point like you'd like to know like No no, I'm not I'm 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 not, I'm just adding to what you said because mm -hmm. people sometimes assume that somehow the language enforces it. It's not just a convention. Just like the exclamation point at the end of a name, which is a different convention like that, which generally simplifies, this is the more dangerous version of this. So if there's maybe a delete method, and a delete bang, because that's what, that's what we call an exclamation point as geeks, right? Bang. Delete bang is different from delete, and you can assume that delete bang is somehow more destructive. Anybody, who, anybody else have, have thoughts about, about Ruby, good or bad? Yes? Well, I thought, I, I'm very new, so like, Last semester, I learned started learning Java. I yeah. Learned a. Yeah. So as I as I'm going through these exercises, I'm I'm realizing, okay, hold on, do I even know how to do this in Java? So I have to like go and go back and, and try and do the same exercise in Java. So yeah. I actually know yeah. How to do it. Right. 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 So that's I'm, interesting. I'm like a little shaky, but yeah. but it's actually fun. Yeah, that's interesting. It's interesting because um, it tells you something about the way you learn Java and how comprehensive you learn because this. Uh, the hard way starts with very, very simple things. I'm sure the first five lessons were going like, what's up with this? It's so dumb. But once you get up to 40, you're going to see it's not so dumb anymore. And I've had good success with this thing. It's kind of a fun thing. It's kind of chatty, and people have done well. What about the, the Ruby the hard way? Who, who, um, who made it beyond lesson 20? OK. Um, so let's pick somebody who did not make it past lesson 20. You, sir. How, did the, how much of Ruby the hard way did you get to? I've done up to lesson 18. Uh huh. Oh, okay. And how how was it for you? Mm, it's kind of pretty easy. Yep. 
because I have learned some Python, so oh, I can learn that Python. by similar. Yeah, yeah. Do you know Python really well? Uh, kind, not really. Uh huh. But but yeah. I mean, people say I, I know Python a little bit, and people say that Python and Ruby are kind of similar okay. in in philosophy, even though some details are different. Who here knows Python well? Uh, somebody I don't know. Okay. How do you compare Python and Ruby? Uh, uh, just like I was saying before, like some of the like conventions are a bit different. Yeah. Like things that you would name, uh, uh, like methods or like instance methods that are already inside objects. Uh huh. But it's pretty much the same. Like in Python, everything is an object. In Ruby, everything is an object, but like with less syntactic sugar. I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who went crazy for the lack of semicolons, or who likes it? Likes it. Dislikes it. Oh, okay. How about the sometimes leaving off parentheses? Likes it. That's confusing. Confusing, right? <laughs> you're going to learn to love it, but you're right, it's confusing. Uh, you know, those of you who don't get it, I, if I have a function called put s, which I'm sure you've used, I could say put s hello, but I can also say put s hello. These are the same because parentheses are optional in Ruby. Not always. Almost always. <coughs> Not always. All okay. quotation marks are pretty cool. Pardon me? How uh, you don't have to like do double quotation marks or like single quotation marks. What do you do? Is, oh, you can do one or the other. Yeah. yeah. And they have slightly different semantics, by the way. Um, but I won't get into it now. Usually they're interchangeable. OK. Great. Ah! Um, who looked at PA movie, the movies one, and, and got into it? Any questions about it? Did you understand the assignment? Was it well explained, or are there questions about it? I just have one question. Yeah. For the methods that you have, where it takes the arguments, are those the ar only arguments that we're allowed to have as? No, you can, you can uh, I have to look at it again, but probably, in general, I'm not that narrow-minded. So okay. if you feel like you need another <laughs> argument, then you can put it in. I might, I might complain about it, but you should definitely go for it if you need it. Any other, yeah? I was confused how to read the data. You mean technically? Yeah. Okay, just do some Googling on, uh, or does everybody know Stack Overflow? Who does not know Stack Overflow? Not the term, but the site, just so you know. Okay, <laughs> you don't know it. Okay, it's, it's, it's like the best technical question and answer site in the world. <laughs> And you can post, and I'll teach you at some point, maybe I'll, do, I'll teach you now, how to ask the question on such a site so that it will be answered. Uh, but basically, any question, even something really elementary, you can ask on Stack Overflow, and somebody will give you an answer. But something like that is, I would just Google Ruby file IO, and you'll find it. And basically, this, this, it's very, very, very easy. So that's how you would do it. It's a text file. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can find, it's a, I believe it's a CSV file, common delimited text. So you can find a CSV class in, in Ruby, which will make it really easy to read in a CSV file, like in one line. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes sense now. Okay. Any other questions about the movies one? Oh. Okay, good. Excellent. All right. Okay, this is going to be, so I want, uh, I'm going to show you the website real quick, and then I'm going to do a little, uh, interactivity. So here's how the website works. This is a very interesting link, list of lectures. You see here, all lectures have a number, they have a date. This is a link to the page for the lecture. This is a very short description of what it's about. And this is a very short description of what the homework is for that, for that class, okay? And every single one is here. The ones that are called lab are labs. Secondly, so that's important, that's an important link. Secondly, over here, you see all the lectures one by one, so you can see the flow. Um, and then down here is information about the incubator and then some background. Interesting. Um, so let me talk. So that's what the that's what the site is about. So take a few minutes, two or three minutes. Everybody, share a screen with the person sitting next to you. Look around the site and find a question about it that you want to ask. Every pair should come up with one question. Don't look to it up there. Just look around. <coughs> um.
No, that's a very good question. Every lack that, by the way, that is just a summary. If you go to the corresponding page, like this one, you see that every single page starts with homework due for today. Uh, so that's due for today. Uh, but so while we're on the topic, very important topic, uh, you see here there are two red things: deliverable and deliverable. Okay, these two things ha are things that need to be handed in to latte. You will find in latte a deliverable uh, or an assignment called lecture 10, so 10-2, second deliverable, so 10-2 is the name of this deliverable, and there will be a place where you insert a PDF or whatever. This one here does not have a red deliverable. It's still homework. It's really important homework. And asking you here, actually this is, no, let's take this, this one here. Continue working on PA3 as usual you'll be doing your work in your portfolio. So let me explain about the portfolio. So we're setting up on a Brandeis server, a directory, where each student will have a portfolio where the coding work will be done, at least in the beginning of the class. Uh, and the, the, the reasoning for that is that I don't want to ask you to hand in, continue working on PA1, or whatever it is, PA3, because that's kind of lame but I do want a way to supervise what's going on. And so if you do the work in that shared directory, then the, the TAs and I, once a week, will look over your shoulder and look at your progress. Not so much is it correct or wrong, but are you, did you get it? Are you stuck? Are you going down the wrong path or whatever, that kind of thing. So notice that there are three very important homeworks here. Only two require latte. So don't think that you can just look at latte and figure out what? Don't think you can just look at Latte and figure out the homework is. This is the place to look for where the homework is. Okay? Great question. Next. There. Question? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Next one. Question? Come on. <laughs> now you're, okay. Uh, you're not going to, uh, one more time. Question? Okay. Could you tell us more about the portfolio of the Brandeis server? As a what? Oh yeah, okay, so we so basically there's servers at Brandeis and there's gonna be a way for you to mount that that server onto your whatever that computer is. What is that? A surface? Okay. Woohoo! Cool. Oh we'll talk about that. <laughs> it's a nice computer, but I don't think it's gonna be good for this class. Um, that's why I have this. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll get to that. So basically it's gonna be a directory tree on on our server, but you, basically just directories, and you'll be doing work in it. Let me just jump to that portfolio page here. So this describes it. Basically, here, you're required to organize your portfolio in a very specific way so we can automatically review your work. How is it organized? It's organized like this. 
uh, code slide 166B slash your name slash some top level directory, all of which correspond to parts of coding work you have to do. And so you basically change directories to here and you work there. That's the idea. Okay? And, the, and again, the, per the reason is that uh, I don't want to ask you to upload it to GitHub every time. I don't want to ask you to zip it up and send it to me every time. That's too much work. So if we do it in a place that we can, we can look over your shoulder, that's much easier. <coughs> Let's talk about who thinks that they're going to be using a Windows computer in this, in this class? Who still, who still is living on that assumption? OK. OK. I'm going to tell I'm going to, I'm going to, what's going on out there? I'm going to, I'm going to tell you again. Uh, I'm not going to prevent you from doing it, but past history suggests that you will be, your, your, your uh, percentage of happiness <laughs> will, you know, in other words, if you take, here's how, I can explain it like this. Here's time. Uh, if you have a Mac, your percentage of happiness, well, it starts high because you have a Mac. <laughs> it dips down a little bit and it goes back up. If you have Windows, it goes like this. <laughs> okay, that's not because Windows is bad. It just happens that the open source tools we use, people don't use Windows much, so the support is much more dicey. It's getting better, but it's dicey. So my strong recommendation is that you, and there's people in this room that can help you do this, you cr make your computer dual bootable into Linux. And if all you do, just, uh, if all you do is that, you'll find it very easy to deal with. There are plenty of people that can help you, and your happiness will be like this. So I'm not going to count it against you, but I know that you're going to suffer. <laughs> Question, yeah. No, I just have a suggestion. There's like a program called VirtualBox where you yeah. can install like Linux, and you basically run Linux as like a separate window on your computer. So. OK, I'm going to say that's a, that's a pretty good idea, except VirtualBox will run much, much slower. You're better off dual booting into Linux. Then Linux runs directly on your computer. It's really painless. If you, you need to have about, I'm told you need to have about 12 or 13 gig free. That's it. It's really painless and it really works. Back there, sir, you had a question. Oh yeah, I was just gonna recommend using a virtual machine or ask about using a virtual machine. Okay, the same. So yeah, yeah. I mean, that's why I mean in the in the past we tried that. Last year we tried it. It sounded like a good idea. It gets complicated quickly. And it's definitely slower because you're running Ruby and then you're running Rails and then you're running this and it's doing network I/O a lot to get its work done. It gets slower. Okay. So, and it's really don't be scared. It, it, you know, if you have 12 or 13 gig free, you can do a, a dual boot partition, and it's really try it. It's it's not going to break your computer. It's not going to hurt anything. A lot of people do it all the time. Okay. All right. I hope I convinced you. Next question. Oh, yes. Question is still on that. Yes. So do I need the Linux distro here, or can I just do it on the desktop with my that I have an extra hard drive? Oh, 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 well, oh, I see what you're saying. Do I need, like, you need to have it in class? Yeah. I think you'll be happier if you have it in class, to be honest. Um, but, uh, and the reason is that we'll be, like, in lab. We're going to have, like, two hours, three hours of lab, and we're going to be building apps during that. Um, I mean, I think you can run a, parti uh, a Linux partition on this. How, you, have, you probably have like a terabyte of space on that thing. What do you have? A service for this too. I think I have like 28 or 3. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how big is this? I have on that thing. Or is it? I did it on the service for 2 before. Yeah. Okay. So, so he'll help everybody. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, there's plenty of people that can help you. OK? OK, next next question. Uh, next pair. Oh, um, I just want to ask also about GitHub. How are we using that? Okay. Um, so GitHub, what is GitHub? I'm gonna, we're going we're gonna to get to that. Git is, a, is, is currently the popular, the most popular source code management tool. Source code management means a way to control a library of source code so that multiple people can work together without wiping each other out. We'll learn how to use it. GitHub is a site that uses that same app, same tool, to upload code to the web so that your co co your colleagues can use it from their computers. Next question. You got it. You have a question? No question? Oh, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, no, I think that's one. Uh, okay, next slide. Oh, actually, I want to know 
it is a demand that we work all our stuff in the portfolio, or we can just work in a lot of stuff and then I only got those portfolios? Uh, I you know, I prefer to have it done in the portfolio unless it turns out legitimately to be really hard. Because and the reason is just that way we can be more real time without asking you to give it to us, zip it up, unzip it, blah blah blah. It's just easier for us to just look at what people do. Open up in a big explore, go boom, okay, that looks okay, boom, that looks okay. Oops, that's working stuck. That's what's going on. Next question. Uh, so on your on the grading, you said part of the Cost preparation and letting the teachers know ahead of time to can't show up. So if you want us to email you, if we're no, going to be late, like five, ten minutes, or is that? Uh, I mean, yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, because if you five, ten minutes late every class, then we're going to notice. So it's better to have a reason if that's going to happen. Okay. Yes. Okay, question. Uh, what's the extra credit like? Okay. The extra credit. Um, it's usually, it's, it's, first of all, if the student has an idea, that's okay. It's got to be something that is relevant to the course. It could be, you know, um, investigate a, a, a series of gems to find which one performs better. It could be um, add a, you know, do a, a, a scalability experiment on your product. It could be even find some relevant um, research papers and analyze them and write a report about them. It's that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I, I basically, I have a collection of them in my head, depending on the student, I'll come up with something. Cool. They're usually, they're totally relevant, uh, but I also say, if you read the fine print, that generally you're better off investing your time in, in, the, main, in the main path. There's always, you know, two weeks before the end of the semester, some people freak out and they go, I, uh, and, you know, and I, I want to have a, an extra credit because they're nervous about some of the intermediate grades they got. Um, and I generally try to tell them, that make your showcase presentation that much more excellent and it'll pay off bigger in terms of a break even. But you know, but I definitely have them there. And they could be interesting. Uh, I'm gonna jump over here. Question? Um, where's the lab? Uh, it's um, downstairs from here. It's another classroom that looks just like this, but it's downstairs. It's it's also on stage. Question for you guys? Uh, what is I've never had a lab before, so like, what's going to be the structure of the lab? Is it going to be like TA hours in Vertica or a little no, bit? No, it's it's well at the beginning it's going to be a little bit like class because I'm using it to fill in more blanks, but gradually it'll become people coding in teams with TAs floating around to help you. So it's a little bit like Vertica except you know it's more structured. But basically, the closer we get to the end, the more of your time and attention is spent building the products. Yes. Yeah. If we've been, I when I looked at the portfolio, it said that we need to be like tracking our progress on learning Ruby the hard way, and also uploading those to the portfolio. Yeah. Uh, if we've been doing like every other exercise in learning Ruby the hard mm -hmm. way, is that okay, or do we need to have like every? It's kind of okay. In other words, my goal is to be able to again similarly to see that people are getting it, uh, and so if one says you know write a program that, that, that prints all the even numbers, and the other one says write another program that prints all the days of the week, and you skip one, I don't really care. But uh, the point is, you look at it from our perspective, we want to be able to look at what you put in the portfolio and say, this person understands and has been doing the work. That's basically it. Yeah. Okay, question from this table? The quiet one, yes? Um, has it all been asked? Yeah. You have a question? I know, I'm asking you. I have a question about the extra credit. Oh, you're, yeah, we got it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I think all my questions were answered. Okay, good. Any, anyone that has a question that I didn't call on because I want to move on? Yes? What happens if there are more for people Well, for, ah, yes. Very good. Um, I don't mind if two teams work on the same product uh, because you just compete. Who gets the better solution? Uh, but the teams are four people. Not more, not less. Four. And unfortunately, to you guys who have had me before, I picked the team. Sorry, I know that's not ideal for you, but my experience is there's less sadness and more happiness with this way. Yes? For our TAs. Gentlemen, introduce yourselves. I'm Chris. I'm Jacob. I'm Wendy. And uh, you and, and they are all. Um, I'll list them on the site. I don't think I have them listed on the site. So you can get their emails, their home address, <laughs> <laughs> their Facebook, everything. 
Okay, great, excellent. Um, let's go on. Next, what we're going to do, oh yeah, so some of you, who, have not, who is not currently registered because they can't? One, two, three, four, five, okay. Um, so, six, no, I think I counted five. Okay, so those of you, please go to the waiting list for COSI 166, 167 and fill this out just so I know who you are. Those that were interested but couldn't show up today, I assume they're not that interested. So these are the people that are going to get in if there's space. Okay, so fill that out. Um, uh, I'm going to use my own judgment and magical algorithm to decide whether I want to increase the number of people in the class, what I, what I want to do. But at least this way I'll know who the people are that are serious. Um, and by the way, you know, until, you know, if you do get in the class, then the assumption is that you have been coming to class and have been doing the work. So for the first, probably just a week, come anyway. All right. Time check. Okay. We go to, what time do we go to? 1.40, right? 1.50. 1.50, yes. Yeah. Uh, shouldn't there a number of people in this class fit into an even Four. That's a very good point. Uh, that had occurred to me. 32 people? Huh? 32 people? Could be. Yeah, could be. Yeah. Uh, yes. The, the truth is, that problem comes up anyway because people can drop until, you know, and, and stuff like that. So I, I've had to deal with it in the past. But yeah, I mean, if I like you guys, maybe I raise it to 28. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I like all of you. Um, Okay, so let's, uh, instead of that, let's go to the 20 minute quick assignment just to break the, break the blah, blah, blah for a second. This is gonna be the only assignment that you have that you're gonna hand in on paper. Please pass back. And while you pass back, I'll explain it. So the purpose of this little problem, this little pop quiz, is for me to find out where people are at. So it's not that great. Uh, it's basically to just get an idea of what level people are at. Gravity is kind of new. Okay, listen up. So here's the assignment. There's three sections. Section one, basic shell commands. What do the shell commands do with these things? List all the files in the current directory, change to a different directory, delete a file, delete a directory and its contents. What do the following shell commands do? cp my file.rb, your file.rb, cd dot dot, mv my dev free time home rb, my dev sample home rb. Very, you know, very straightforward. Second, part two, three or whatever number of lines it takes you to write a short program that prints out all the even numbers between 20 and 100. Use any language you like, including pseudocode. Part three, simple class design. Um, this is the one that will take you the most time. Um, we have a, a simple game that involves vehicles and a garage. We want to represent a parking garage. A parking garage can have one or more levels. Each level can hold zero or more vehicles. Um, vehicles, all individuals have, all vehicles have an integer height in centimeters. And then there's three different kinds of vehicles, uh, maybe two, let's write that. A car, which Cost ten dollars an hour to park and does not need may need service and a police car where the parking fee is free and there's a true false whether it's on an emergency. So there's two kinds of cars: cars and police cars. Define the class structure. Remember, pseudocode is okay. I'm not going to compile it it's on paper. Don't worry too much about the syntax. Just worry to be able to think about how the class to go together. Define a class structure for each of those: so garage, level, police car, and regular car. Yes. It doesn't have to be language specific, right? No, no, it could be any language. Any language. Yeah. yeah. Fortunately, if you want. Define a class structure for each of those. You may use inheritance if you want, but it does not make it a better solution. The garage class should have the following methods. Add a level, count cars, which returns a count of how many police cars there are in the garage. No, sorry, how many regular cars there are in the garage. That's a typo. Count police cars, which returns how many police cars. Uh, a method on the garage that says a car arrives, which adds a car to a free space on any floor. Uh, don't worry about how to find a free space. Car departs, which removes a car from the garage, assuming it's there. 
print report which shows how many floors the garage has, how many vehicles of what kind are in each floor. Finally, write a main program that creates a garage with two levels, creates three cars and one police car, notes the arrival of all four vehicles, <coughs> prints a report of the current st status of the garage, notes the departure of all four vehicles. In other words, it'll say garage, dot, vehicle departed, etc. And then finally prints a report of the current status of the garage. Okay? Yes. Oh yeah. Shoot. Wait, are there leftover is there leftover paper anywhere? Okay. I couldn't believe I uh, 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 for it, I can't see it on that. Oh, oh, sorry about that. It's um, bit.ly slash. Uh, yeah, yeah, and then at the bottom, it was always there. It's uh, called uh, leveling exercise. Uh, Very okay. 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 Are we working together or is it individual? Individually. Individually. Where is my sensor? Uh, no. Uh, okay, do it. Just so I. I don't even remember your name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Just for completeness. About it's a different problem. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the <laughs> uh, where's your yeah. waiting list? Uh, where's that? Oh, it's, it's, it's linked to from the page for today. Okay. Look at it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're on the site. Okay. So the question was, where is the? So on the front page. Your search for level of exercise. Uh, on the front page, you'll see here the waiting list. Whoever asked for the waiting list? Yes. Who was asking for the waiting list? It's right there. Yeah. And um, and the leveling exercise is at the end here. Is it on the
Peter. For car departs, is it you give it a specific car or it just removes a random car? Uh, specific car. Uh, do we use do the breakdown like how many how many grand series have No, no. Just for now, for this is just cars versus police cars right there. No SUVs. Yes. Um, are all the methods are all parameters known for them? Do they accept nil parameters, all the methods for like garage methods? What do you mean do they accept nil? Uh, do they accept any like method? Like, oh yeah, if, they, if you need if you need a method as a parameter, you, you put one in, definitely. Yeah? So we're excluding SUVs from the whole program? Do they put SUVs in there? They may be a, a yeah, parameter for another day. Yeah. Any yeah. kinds of vehicles. Oh yeah, forget SUVs, sorry about that. I, I edited it and I left it behind. Sorry about that. So and um, all vehicles have the same height, right? Normal vehicles. Uh, no, the height is a parameter. Um, yeah, let's say they all have the same. Because then it will be only distinguishing departing either a police vehicle or a random right. car. Right, right. So everything is either police or a regular car. Yeah. It's obviously not a complete model. <laughs> There's count cars and there's count police cars. Uh, does count police cars do the same thing as count cars because it says return account of how many police cars are on the garage? Uh, isn't it, does it also say return? Out, um, yeah, when I was reading it, I corrected it on the fly. It should uh, say return how many cars and return how many police cars. Okay. So the, the label is the comment is wrong, but the function name is where it is. making notes so I can fix it for next year.
architecture different? Yes. Can I get a piece of paper?
you have two sheets, please fold the corner so I can tell which goes together. Don't worry if you're not done. But we are out of time. Please pass the papers to the end. Perfect timing though. Pass it and quit so they don't burn. Thank you very much. I hope that wasn't too much of a pain. Uh, what, 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 what? Comments? Back talk? What? Okay. Uh, all right, good. So, we can make this ugly thing go away. All right. Uh, got the waiting list. Got the, the quick assignments. Uh, let's see. Let's talk a little bit about a little bit about homework, although I think I mentioned it in the beginning, so I don't think I have to go through it in detail. But yes, there is a fair bit of homework. And uh, I apologize now for your complaints later. <laughs> but um, but it's all, you know, it's not random. I mean, in fact, with the homeworks, I try to justify, explain. When there's readings, I try to point out to you exactly what parts to look for, what concepts are key, and so on. Um, you're responsible to read the, the next lecture's page on the website to see what the homework is. If you rely on looking at latte, you're going to miss some important stuff. Uh, I talked about the red deliverable. There's also red team deliverables, which will come later, where the team as a whole is responsible for one copy of the deliverable. And we'll discuss the homeworks in the next class, obviously. Portfolio I talked about. OK, that's basically about homework. Any question about that? Talk about grading now, real quick. Um, again, this I think I talked about real briefly. But basically, um, normal numbers um, do when the class starts. Uh, they're scored in a 1 to 100 scale. If you don't hand something in, you get 40, not zero, which is just really cool. And, uh, uh, if you want an extension, then send an email to one of the TAs, and they have the freedom to grant an extension. And I've been told that they're reasonable guys. So be nice to them, though. Um, and if you actually don't ask for an extension and you, ha you want to hand it in late, you can do that, or if you ask for an extension and don't make the extension, you can try that. They may accept it, but no matter what, um, you're going to lose 15 points. So if you gave an A plus piece of work, you still get 85. Because why? Because it's not really fair to the people that struggle to get the homework in on time if you could do it two weeks later and get the same grade. So that's, that's why that is. Um, the grades will all be recorded in latte. Um, the commitment is that you get the grade, the, I call them scores, really, the score for the, for the assignment in latte within a week. And then we'll average it all out for a midterm grade and for a final grade. Basically, the grade, the, the, the grade is divided into the following buckets. Class participation, which is, um, as I was telling them earlier, basically everybody gets an A for that unless. So it's easy. Show up, be awake. Do the homework so when I walk around and ask you questions like, what is 
single responsibility principle, what does that really mean? You know. Or if I ask you, did you actually read the chapter? And you say, no. That's all stuff that considers that bad for participation. Or if you've been spending the whole class on Facebook, that might not be so cool either. So that's participation is basically you can only do bad. If you don't, if you do normal, you, you do well. Did you have a question? No. Okay, I thought I saw your hand. Um, this pro this course is very heavy on teamwork. Okay, that's one of the big things you're going to learn. Everybody says when they're done with this course, that was one of their most important learnings: is how to function in a team. And the things I've heard afterwards and sort of the after discussions is uh, I learned how important it is to be flexible, to listen to other people's point of view. Um, I've learned uh, how important it is to find a way to meet face to face every week. Um, I've learned how important it is to make commitments to each other and then be reliable. And these are all things that you've learned that are going to be important for you no matter what you pursue, whether it's a job in the software business, whether it is a job in finance, whether it is in academia. You can't do anything by yourself. You're always working on a team. And so that's like a fundamental skill and you're going to get a lot of that in this class. That's why team contribution is a big chunk. Do you contribute personally to your team? Are you positive? Are you a positive influence on the productivity? Do, do your teammates like working with you? Are you at the center of problems or of solutions? It's based both on self and peer assessment. Very subjective, but you'll know when you're on a team, and you'll know if you're not doing your bit, and you'll know if somebody else is not doing their bit. You'll know when people want to meet with everybody except you. <laughs> That's happens. Um, so you don't want any of those things to happen, okay? Remember, I'm not, you're not getting married. I'm not asking you to be best friends. It's just one semester. Uh, and the key is the job. Get, as they say in football, do your job, right? Get the job done at the end. That's success, you know? You actually will meet, you might meet some of your best friends, but that's not the goal. So don't worry too much about it if you don't like the way he combs his hair or whatever. Okay. Uh, the final project is the big thing. So the final project are the products that we talked about. Uh, and uh, it's going to be end, it ends with a, uh, a, a big showcase where you demo your product, you present it. We'll have some number of outside experts who will uh, give you feedback and uh, as well um, uh, allocate an investment of $10 million of fake money to the teams as they, as they see fit. So they can give the whole $10 million to one team if they think that one's best. Or they can be like a children's party and give everybody their fraction. But usually that doesn't happen because I encourage them to be blunt. So that's always really fun. That's how the, and that's 40%. That's big. Then you have the programming assignments. And finally, you have the extra credit, which I talked about before. So that's how we compute grades. Questions? Sound reasonable? Understandable? Appropriate? Fair? Good. Um, Okay, this is important. Let's talk about the product candidates. Nobody proposed any new products. So I have 10, and I, I have one or two more that I'll add. Um, some of them are more detailed than others, but basically, I'm gonna quickly rattle through them. Barter Me is basically a, a platform to allow people to barter. Okay, so I have uh, an old laptop, you have uh, an old bike, can we trade it? Can I sell it to you in exchange for services? Can I drive you to uh, around campus for two weeks in exchange for getting your whatever deck of cards? So it's bartering, um, probably, and it's very rich. It's got a lot of possibilities. The second one is IMDb for books. Who knows IMDb, Internet Movie Database? So basically, and some of you know it well, uh, basically the idea is if you know IMDb, it's not movie reviews per se, it's data about movies. Who's the actors, who's the director, who's the producer, what other movies were the actors in, you know, stuff like that, data, as opposed to Wikipedia, which is more like narrative. So IMDb for books does the same thing for books. I'm reading a book now, what other books did this author write? How were they rated? Um, you know, what, what books came out of Ireland during the, during the 40s? 
um, what books that are on the bestseller list, that have been on the bestseller list for the last five years, are about technology. Questions like that, which you just can't get on Google or Wikipedia. That's what IMDb for books is. I think it's a cool idea. Uh, remember my name, that's for just for me, because I need it. Uh, it's basically a, a um, uh, flashcards for names. So basically, you enter into it a series of fo photos and a series of names. And it shows you a name and asks you to pick. The, uh, it shows you a photo, and you have to say what the name was. If you get it right, then you learn it. If you did not, it shows you again a little bit later. So it uses this. I think they call inter, uh, times training or interval training, which is a theory that says, you know, if you if it, it starts figuring out whether you know something well, and if you don't know it well, it asks you many times. So that's what um, remember my name is. Carpe Diem is a is an app to allow um, probably students to do you know, real-time announcement of something that's going on that you may want to attract other people to come to. So this afternoon, I'm driving to Cambridge. Who wants to come with me? Uh, tomorrow morning at 7 AM, we're going to have a big bagel and lots of breakfast if you want to come. Um, we're going to play Frisbee on, on, the, on Chapel Field tomorrow. Whatever it is, you know, there's a cool lab experiment going on in the basement of such and such. Anything you may want to let know that is, that is really real time that wouldn't really work so well on Facebook, where the recipients can say, I'm only interested in events that have to do with science, or I'm only interested in events that, are, that have food. So it's basically a real time event notification service. Uh, student opinion panels. This one I think is a moneymaker. I'm telling you. So, um, so the world all wants to know what students think, believe it or not. People that are building products, I mean, I have all the time, you know, can I get a few students to, to show this product? Can I find out whether, what TV shows they watch? Now, students are hard to get to because they're inside the protected privacy cocoon of the university. So what if you could have a service where a student could sign up to be a, a, a member of a panel, and a client could come and say, I would like to find 20 students uh, in these three states, in between this age and that age, and ask this question to. And it would make the connection. The client would be like, you know, Procter & Gamble would pay like $10,000, and the students would get a cut of that. So it's basically instant student uh, surveys, uh, directed and, and, and paid for by clients. I think that's, I don't think that exists. Trade Assistant, this was done last year. Trade Assistant basically is, um, if those of you who are interested in, 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 in the stock market, uh, it's, a, it's an application that lets you say, I am interested to get a notification whenever Apple stock drops more than 20% in less than three months at the same time as it's, uh, they've had a product, they haven't had a product announcement in six months. So write sort of uh, interesting, complicated rules that say when you want to get an alert from the system that says, this is a stock you may want to buy. Now, if you don't know anything about the stock market, what I just said is gibberish. But if you do, it's a cool product. Um, Twitter feed reader, that's a one that says, uh, and that's how I use Twitter primarily, is I have like 100 of my favorite tweeters that are always publishing links. And I would like to be able to say, give me a, a follow the links and make them into a readable, scrollable uh, dashboard where I can just see what it is that they're talking about. Not the link, but the content itself. Um, Zillow for dorm rooms. Zillow is a real estate app, uh, app that allows you to find out how much this house is worth uh, or has it been sold. So my idea was, if you were in Shapiro 101B, significance of that room is that's the room I was in when I was a freshman. Uh, <laughs> if you're in there and you notice that you can always hear the steam pipes banging, or you notice that it's really convenient because it only takes two minutes to get over to the cafeteria before everybody else gets there, these are facts that you learn about by living there. And the next year, somebody might like to know that. So a way to let information about the, the goodness or badness of a certain dorm room be passed from year to year. Uh, and finally, five questions. This is a very introspective one. This is, you find you sign up to this thing at the beginning of the, sem uh, of the year, let's say. Anyone who uses it gets posed five questions, like, you know, uh, what do you, you know, what you know, what do you hope to do when you graduate? Or, you know, what, what are the, the, what's the worst thing that happened to you last year? Whatever. And you have a week to answer the questions, and it goes into a vault, private vault, and you can't even look at it until 12 months later when it shows you what you ans answered last year, and you can ask the questions again for next year. 
So it gives you some sort of a very long-term introspection as to what your mindset was over the four years in college. I think that's kind of cool too. So there's 10 products. I can give you more detail on any of them. But what I suggest is, what, what's going to happen is, very soon this list is going to get frozen. And then the teams that we form is going to be asked to select the product off this list. Yes? Can we still submit more ideas for apps? You got to do it very, very fast. Like I need to get it before the end of this week. OK? Uh, and then I will vet it, because these are selected to be sort of appropriate, the right level of difficulty, and so on. But yeah, absolutely. I would love it. Nobody's done it yet, so I, you know, I, that's fine. That's no problem. But yeah, I would love to have some more products on here. So that's basically, uh, I think we're out of time. That's basically it. Um, uh, let me just, before, I know you're supposed to go, but let me just quickly look at next week, uh, tomorrow rather. So tomorrow, we're just going to, there's homework. Sorry. Look at it. Read it. Do it. And then tomorrow, we're going to have two hours of just fun and games playing with computers. Bring your computers. If you don't have your Linux partition yet, bring it. We'll get it set up for you. Okay? Thanks. See you tomorrow.